for uh, the scan to work correctly, I want to have the following stages. I want to have a pre-op stage of the working arch, an antagonist, a working stage, uh, the scan body stage and the occlusion stage. This is why I'm going to have the next options checked. I'm going to have a color filter checked so that I am able to um, filter out my gloves. I don't need this arch to be scanned in HD. I just need normal information. Uh, I'm going to check uh, the scan metal function and I hope and I also will uh, disable sleep checker. I don't need the system to re-evaluate every image I take. So sleep checker will stay off. For the first thing I will do, I will start impression, uh, taking the scan of only the teeth. I am going to start with the occlusion uh, surface of the molars from the contralateral side. I'm going to, um, as you can see here, uh, in the incisal, hover over and uh, do an angulation between buccal and lingual and buccal and lingual to get enough information of, uh, of the crowns to have a occlusal surface and also some parts of the papilla. Then I'm going to go lingual and uh, also vestibular. And now I'm going to get my buccal scan right. I'm uh, going to just do uh, um, adding information between the already mentioned occlusal scan and the uh, fixed gingiva scan that I already did. So I'm putting information in. And right now, as you can see, my whole scan is green. I do stress upon having information green everywhere. And uh, please do scan your cases in reliability mode uh, for as long as you feel that you are not uh, very in control of scans. Now, as you can see, furthermore, I'm completing the last pieces of the scan. And I'm going to stop here. I'm not going to take an impressions of the healing abutments yet. So right now, I am going to check my scan, as you can see. I am going to trim any unnecessary data, as you can see in the next image. Now is the time to activate sleep checker. And why I do this? Because healing abutments with a fixed gingiva around them are uh, surfaces that are not very high and uh, the surfaces that don't have a lot of detail. So I check sleep checker and now I'm going to image the healing abutments. As you can see, I'm uh, going to go forward. And now, they, because they are sandblasted and slip checker is on, it's very easy to take a good impression of the surfaces. I have all the data now. And afterwards, I'm going to um, stop again, optimize again as I uh, the scan of the antagonist, as you can see, and um, we'll try to image the occlusal surfaces of the lateral uh, maxilla and also get some parts of the papilla, as I told you, uh, on the lower side. So you'll see how I go forward. Um, on the middle portion, I will angle my, um, my uh, scanning tip from uh, buckle to link to uh, Palatal and uh, buccal palatal until I get all the information I need. Uh, and then going to the lateral side, on the lateral side, I'm going to finish the um, uh, palatal scanning and uh, go on the buccal, add data there. So you see, we try to have as clean a mesh as possible. So starting uh, with the occlusion scans, and you, as you'll see here, we're going to then stop scanning, leave the scanner to optimize its data, and now that contains the healing abutments. And this part that contains the healing abutments, I'm starting the scan um, from the teeth that are present, and then I am going to uh, take an impression of the teeth and healing abutments, but at this point, I always tell the patient to 
pull the tongue to the other side. Also, I never let the patient open his mouth. So when I take the first, uh, let's say, the right part of the occlusion, when I take the scanner outside uh, the mouth, I tell the patient not to open up and I'm going to retract tissues on the other side and put the scanner in. I do this because I uh, tend to see that patients are not going to always bite in the same spot. So if I want to uh, have a, a correct occlusion scan, I will uh, ask the patient to not open and uh, validate that the occlusion is the one I need and the correct occlusion and just afterwards start scanning. As you can see, tongue is not in our way because the, because the patient has pulled it on the uh, contralateral side. Okay, now we go to the op stage and in the op stage, we are going to cut out the healing abutments and um, image the emergency profiles. For this to uh, be done in a correct way, I like to only cut the distal healing abutment, keeping the mesial one in place, as I am doing here. You see, I've removed it. And now I am going to uh, block everything because this was uh, scanned correctly and I don't want anything to happen to my already correct mesh. And I am going to add additional data in the, play in, uh, in the spot I've already cut. You're going to uh, add the emergency profile now the scanner, if it, uh, it doesn't have uh, this custom uh, shape set, is going to also try and add, add data from the moving parts. And I don't want that. I just want it to read the fixed gingiva. Let's see how it does this. We start from the teeth and from the mesial healing button. And you see how easy it adds data and how clean it adds data. Okay. Now we stop because we already have the healing abutment, and we take out of uh, the emergency profile. And now that we recorded um, the distal emergency profile, we are going to now cut the um, mesial healing abutment out of the scan. As you can do here, you see here. And afterwards, I am going to block all data because in the distal I don't want my emergency profile getting getting modified. And also on the mesial, um, I don't want the X gingiva to get modified. Okay, let's see this again. We're going to add data now. The same uh, rectangle. Uh, box to actually record the data. Everything goes smoothly. Because everything is blocked, what you can see here, um, scanner adds moving parts, but because everything is blocked, these moving parts won't get stitched to the final model. Now when we stop the scan, they are going to disappear. In part. If we uh, have uh, data that we don't want, this is the step where we can stop and also um, cut out that data.